this is the Pro Tour. Round six of the Pro Tour happened at Kyle Army Grand Prix of Entertainment and great to be back at the famous circuit. We're looking forward to action from the Red Square Kawasaki ZX-10R Masters Cup and the Goldwagen Challenge. A big thanks to Goldwagen and all their associate sponsors for this action from round six of the Pro Tour. Big fields of cars expected here this weekend and looking forward to the battles that are going to happen out on the black stuff at Kyle Army. At the front end of Class B, it was great to see Rory Atkinson keeping up that very good pace of the season and getting the pole position ahead of Elna Cruiser and Darren Nathan. Ramsey was quickest in D ahead of Hurley and Piazza Musa. Darren, Elna and Rory ahead of you again. What is going on, buddy? Yeah, I must be honest, we're battling today. Uh, we battled yesterday. If I'm honest, we found the problem. Um, Graham and his team from Nathan's Motorsport put the car together. It's fantastic. The problem now is there's so much front grip that the back can't, can't keep up. The kids have got good, and you've been hanging on there getting, well, just in battles the whole time. Absolutely. It makes uh, makes me realize I'm 40 and they're 17, eh? <laughs> but no, it's uh, it's a confidence issue as well as uh, I've rolled the car here at Kyle Army. So it's taken me a little bit of time to get my head back in the game. But I've got good people around me. The Rastonic uh, Golf is uh, great. Race one and nine laps of action. Joining me in the commentary booth as always, Graham Nathan. Darren, not such a great qualifier there, but a little bit of work to do to get through on these boys. But good to see the pace is absolutely amazing here. Rory Atkinson straight out into the front. Darren in third place. Elna in second. Behind him, a, a, a welcome return by Holiday. On board now with uh, Stevenson. He's doing a great job. Also, first time he's raced at this racetrack. Comes from biking and uh, having a good go here. Now, watch out for this corner. I know all about it, especially if you're in a polo or a golf. And if you get it right, you can go through just as quick as Ian has done. And it's good to see him up so quickly as the Class D Brat Pack get underway. Check this out. Hurley going at it. Ramsey's there. Piazza Musso. Watch out for Brad Hall. He looked fired up this morning in his interview. Let's see if he can put it onto the black stuff now. Shark Smith uh, getting ahead of both the Rastonic motor cars there and in the, in the green golf. But uh, out in front, we've got uh, young Lyle Ramsey. He's a great turnout for the books for him. Uh, doing a great job since Swartkopf's. He decided he knew how to drive this motor car and he's showing the guys how now. Yeah, Brad Hall closing onto his teammate as the front end starts to open up a bit. You can see the Falcon boy starting to get away. And it looks like Darren's going to have his hands full. Cruises all over the back. Holiday having a good run there. That's uh, Warren Muir's car he's in. And uh, good to have him back in the field. But he's not used to being uh, in this kind of a mix so early on, especially in Class B. Darren working very, very hard. He's uh, uh, unfortunately the best of the rest because Rory absolutely outdid everybody this weekend. And... Uh, pressure all the way. Yeah, definitely, and this if he soaks that pressure up or he's able to capitalize on it, because usually what happens with Nathan is he gets away. Look at how the pressure is being put on here by Jock Smith. He's pulling away from these two Rastonic cars. They don't seem to have a match just yet, but I tell you something, they are going to have their work cut out to try and find a way through. They go through the S's there. Oh, look at that. Sideways stuff. Well, how do you drift a two-wheeler, a front-wheel drive car? That's how you do it. Awesome stuff there. And Alma, well done, keeps out two of the contenders. Up the inside though of Hollywood went uh, Tyrell, he almost got through, tucked in behind him now, trying to slingshot, try and make a, a move at the last corner on the racetrack. Let's have a look, can he do it down there? He goes down the inside, onboard camera from Stevenson, great job there, no, Tyrell sticks in behind and uh, takes it, Hollywood runs wide, Hollywood runs it wide. Can he capitalize? Get there? No, not this time. Pretty close. Bit of a problem, though, in the background. You can see the green golf, unfortunately, running wide out of the bowl. That's opened up the door. And uh, you don't have to ask twice for the two Astonic boys. They're going to just fly through. So a little bit of inexperience there from Jacques Smith. But nonetheless, good to see him running so high up. At the moment, I think it's inexperience from everybody. Nobody's been on this racetrack for such a long time that they're all still finding their way around, finding the grip, uh, the braking zones, the turning zones. And uh, great to be back on this racetrack. Here we hear the view of, uh, and see the view of Lyle Ramsey coming up onto the, the straight towards the S's, tucking into the S's now. Oh, looks like he's got it out of shape, he has! Whoa, whoa, Lyle Ramsey, can he keep it on the black stuff? No, he can't. He goes to a tracking and launches it. That was four wheels off the, in the air there, but that was awesome. Airtime Ramsey, here we go. <laughs> Flying the, the city golf flat out, as you can see. The, oh, and Jock Smith does the same. Is there a problem? Oh, and over it goes. Oh, unlucky there for Jacques Smith. 
Ramsey getting away with it, Smith not getting away with that one, and uh, over it goes. I know another Smith that's gone off there as well. He, unfortunately, in his polo, managed to keep it on all fours. Unlucky there, Jacques, but good to see him get out the car. You can see he just gets out of shape, and as soon as it gets in, they should have straightened it up a little bit. And unfortunately, as soon as that kitty litter bites, it bites sore. And I know all about that. Absolutely. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, hey? And uh, there it is, upside down, dollar sign, Jared goes. But uh, the racing is on. And Darren Nathan's still under huge pressure. That's X straight Polo under pressure from Elna. And behind her is Holiday. Holiday gets it loose. Out of control. A little bit tight there, Dion. Behind him, Tyrell is going to try and get past, I'm sure. Yeah, he's going to look up the inside into the S's, maybe make it stick. Let's see if there's a problem here. There might be some oil or some liquid down here because there was a lot of cars spinning out there. I kind of thought they might give a change of surface flag, but it looks like it's all okay. So those three got through. Darren's got away now. And that's due to the fact that Elmer was probably caught napping watching the people in a rearview mirror as Holiday got out of shape. And now comes Tyrell up the inside. Governor Sami looking for a way through. Can he make it stick? Yes, he can. No answer from Holiday. Has to give him some room. But they go through side by side. And they're going to go through a bridge. That's awesome. Elna is, uh, whoa, she, <laughs> she runs Holiday off the road, getting past. Stevenson has a look. I wonder if she thinks there's going to be a red flag or something, but there, there are no flags out at the moment. She finally gets back on the throttle and decides, oh, well, it seems like there's nothing uh, going to be done about that car in the middle of nowhere, and let's get going again. There she goes. Flat out, Stevenson on it as hard as he can. He didn't pass anybody, but Holiday and Tyrell get by. Oh, but there car. is the safety car, so... A bit of confusion going on yeah, though, Greg. Yeah, I couldn't quite make up their minds as what to do just yet, but uh, eventually Kyle Army Marshall sending the safety car out. That's the Cedar Isle BMW. And uh, you can see that's the reason why Jacques Smith's car on its head and then rolled over back onto the wheels. But uh, once that car goes in, we are back and racing. However, things have tightened up at the front again, and Atkinson now has it all to do again. Hopefully, he won't be caught napping. It doesn't look like Darren's going to be caught at all. He's uh, the uh, trailer right on the back end of that car now. They tucked right in there. The big loser there was Alna Cruiser, though, because uh, it looks like she finally had to queue up in fifth place from, from third. She's got a bit of work to do. The problem, though, now is that uh, Class D is on the back of uh, Class B, and some of those competitors are as quick, if not quicker, than some of the guys... Uh, in the class of Bethlehem. Yeah, this, for sure. They're going to have to work hard and uh, traffic might be a little bit of a problem. <laughs> oh, Whoa, I dear. thought he might be sideways. Yes, he has. Has he caught it? Left, right, centre. Yeah, going left, right, 360 degrees. Which way would you like to go, D? Just give us an indication, mate. When, he, <laughs> when Holiday opened his eyes, he was going the right way. Stevenson sitting behind him there going, make up your mind and don't crash into my car, dude. And a great recovery there from Dion Holiday. Out in front, though, Rory Atkinson takes, takes the bull by the horns and just goes away again. He's doing a great job here this weekend in that uh, Hop Racing uh, Falcon-sponsored polo. Look at this, though. This is good racing, too. Tyrell, Governor Sami, and Elna going at it for third place in the Class Bs. Up the inside. Elna's got the inside line. Tyrell's going to give us some space. Yes, indeed. Let's her through. Was we able to cut him off? Yes, gets through. So that third place battle is not done and dusted, and we've still got four corners to go. Will Tyrell, Governor Sami, come back at Elna? Elna's driving the wheels off that motor car. Darren got a bit of a break because uh, she had to come through from fifth to third again, but uh, I'm sure he's quite relieved, but she's doing a great job right now. It's a nice little battle in the Class Bs, but Class D is right with him. And Piazza Musso is looking for a possibility of uh, stealing the thunder here today. He's still going to catch Lyle Ramsey, who's got two Class B cars ahead of second place. But you can see there's no holding back here from Piazza Musso and sneaks through. Gets one of those cars out the way. Stuart Mack just getting completely out of the way there and a little bit out of shape, in fact, up to West Bank. And now as they come down their mine shaft, and these guys are heading for the flag. Look out for this battle. As I said, Tyrell Governor Sami is not done yet. Absolutely. Elna has to go defensive. Tyrell goes to the outside. She's gonna, he's going to try and cut back on her. She's going to have to defend. And it's a drag race between Julia Sabatini Golf and Hulk Racing Golf. Who is going to get to the line? First, though, is Rory Atkinson. Second is Darren Nathan in the sex straight Polo. Third place, I think, is going to... Yeah, it's Elna Cruiser. She gets it just ahead of Tyrell. Ramsey taking class D. Devin Piazza, Musso, Brad Hall, Hurley and Kelton Brun, the top five. This thing is trucking. Yeah, the car is really moving. Thanks to Andre Haupt and all the guys, we're putting a lot, of, lot more work on it. And it's just really working around here today. It's, it's beautiful to drive. Moving on to classes A and C, and this is where things have changed up dramatically because at the front end of class A, Quinton Needham has found something special. He gets ahead of Mikey's and Smallburgers for class A's one, two, and three. The Batman is at the top of class B, Needham and Fenron closing him down. And you finally figured out and got some pace in the orange machine. Tell me about it. Yeah, we finally uh, got some people to help us. Uh, thanks to Funnel Lindis, uh, Sean helping me out with the power, and Etienne as well. 
Um, the cars there still need to do some setup, and I think it will be quicker than now. Yourself, Andre Needham, Yanni Van Rooyen, you guys are at it, at each other's throats every single round, and you put it on pole this time around. Yes, uh, I'm so happy for that. Yeah, we got the car hooked up yesterday. Just got the settings right. But again, you know, Needham, Van Rooyen, Voter Roos, especially watch him on the start, and that guy's always quick. So he's going to get the drop off the line for Class A, though. Good start there from Valdi. And Quintum, is he going to be able to capitalise from that pole? No, he's not. Valdi looks like he's going to outgun him into turn one and two, and he's done it. Needham has to slot into uh, second place. And here come the rest of the field. Oh, hang tight. This is going to get real interesting. Oh, hello. Already getting sideways. And here we go. Slip and slide. Smallberger's going left, right, through the middle. Wow, that was close. Now, one, another one of those. When he opened his eyes, he had missed everything. Great job there by Charles Smallberger to miss the wall. But look at that. Voteris straight out the blocks as uh, Van Fleder predicted into the lead on board with Philip Cruiser as we have a look here. Going up to turn three and four. Still uh, a lot of dust on the outside. Has Smallberger got in the way? No, he's out the way. And the racing is on. Voter got his head down. He's driving as hard as he can. Needham is going to have to go now. Check it, Cruiser up to third place there. Good stuff from him. Voter Roos getting off the line very nicely. And in the background, starting to come through left, right, and center. Trying to find ways through this field is not the easiest thing to do. You've got to create very creative lines, as we've seen from that big jumbo golf in the background. Let's see if they're able to pay off as they go through and into sunset for the first time. Out in front, though, we've still got the other Needham, followed by Valdi Mankies, Keegan Blackensee, and uh, Gerard Henning. This is Class A up at West Bank, or the old West Bank, and uh, as we know it, down to the mineshaft, back to Class C, and it's still cruising in third place. We've got Adrian Dalton, we've got Craig Eckert. These guys are flat out everywhere. Hope these guys had a chat to Jacques Smith because those little golf ones seem to have some problems to the S so far. He has a move for the lead. Can he make it stick? Getting through nicely. No problems whatsoever. And Andre Needham has hit the front. So the battle continues now between Needham and Vota. And Vota's polo, while he was found wanting, heading up into West Bank Corner. So they come out of the mine shaft. Looks like there's a problem on the inside there. Van Sale, by the looks of things, slowing up. And uh, he'll have to come back and slot into the field somewhere. Van Sale trying to get up the inside of... Uh, oh, no, I think that was Van Fleder going around the outside of him. He's going to go up the inside now of Craig. Does he make it past Yakut? Yes, Yakut slots back to the other side. A drag race now to turn 13. And uh, let's see if the Batman has done enough. He's on the outside. Yakut's on the inside. Yakut gets it. The Batman has to wait one more lap. Uh, the Batmobile, unfortunately, not finding it uh, very easy there with that red golf on the inside. All he oh. saw was red. Oh, he has a move. Up the inside, Cruiser taking out Dalton. And in the background, oh, there's some problems. The Batmobile has been taken out. And Gina Munro just running out of brakes into the final corner. She went up the inside of Fonsal. Fonsal tried to go up the inside of the Batmobile. And he's the only one who came out on top. Von Fleder probably didn't even know she was there. But, uh, yeah, it's still a battle royal for in turn two. Philip Cruiser, Adrian Dalton. Craig Eckert, they are at it. Voter and uh, Needham up the road are uh, oblivious to all the action. But back to Class A, we've still got Needham and Valdi Mankies. Valdi doing a great job this weekend. He uh, pulled his finger out, decided not to bend the motor car, and he's doing a really good job. You know, he's definitely going much better than what we saw the last round where he was bumping and bodying. I think he hit everybody and the pace car at the last round. But this time, he's tucked in and looking for a race victory. Nice to see Keegan Black and see right up there too on his tail, pushing hard, Carlos Nobre. And Carlos Nobre, we know, is very quick around this particular circuit. Carlos is very, very, very fast in that motor car. Battling a little bit uh, in the background of that pack, though, we've got uh, Derek Schmalberger, Gerard Henning. They're all just sitting there waiting for a bit of action to happen, though. But uh, Valdi and Needham have got away. As you can see, though, they have not let up. They're trying everywhere, falling off the road all over each other, Greg. Looking for a way through here now. Dalton's still going at it and hasn't found it just yet. And as you said, Nate, battles right through the field and they don't stop until that checkered flag comes out. That's the best thing about this class. They really give it everything they've got until that man with the flag steps up and waves it in front of the man who comes, or the lady, who comes across the line first. But this is what it's all about in Gold Wagon Challenge. They give it everything. Class C, though, is supposed to be the... Oh! Running right to the outside is uh, Philip Cruiser. Dalton goes around the outside. And uh, Yannick van Rooyen up the inside of Yekot. Yekot gets tagged by Gavin Monroe, but it is still a drag race. They stay on the throttle. They all get through it. And uh, Yannick van Rooyen making up a position there. Uh, Craig Yekot is going to be livid, though. He's going to want to have that place back. Oh, I don't know how hard livid he's going to be. He actually made the mistake himself. He ran wide in the ball. You can see him lock up on the brakes. You can see a manoeuvre coming on uh, Needham at the front end of this field. And it looks like Valdi has got some serious performance coming out of that car now. He's definitely looking for a way through to take the lead. We go on board with him as they head towards Clubhouse. Let's see if we're going to see any overtaking manoeuvres here. They come on late on the brakes. Wow, he rumbled right up onto the back end of that Golf 1.
Voldy really doing a good job. Late on the brakes, need him running wide, trying to get as much energy out of the corner as he possibly can. He tips it into the S's. S is number one, Valdi doing a better line. He's gonna try and bomb him right to the top, up at the old West Bank. Can Valdi make it stick? Right in behind him. This is where he's supposed to do it. Dive out, there it goes. Valdi goes up the inside. Needham's gonna try and outbreak him around the outside. Can Valdi hold this one? He's got the inside line and goes through the triple apex. He gets the first apex right, coming through the second one now. And as they exit the corner, he's taken the lead. So Valdi Mikey's has got to the front and done perfectly, as you said. So let's see if he can keep it there now. Needham is going to have to push hard. He's actually lost a little bit of ground there on that last lap. So let's see if there's actually a problem on that golf or... No, there's definitely no problem. Check that through the S's. Oh! As I said that, I was going to say perfectly done, but then the wheel just came completely off the car. Marshalls went running for their lives, and Needham is in the dirt. That is a mind-blowing thing. That's a very, very fast corner. And as he loaded the suspension on the left rear, it broke off the motor car and almost turned that thing on its lid. Yeah, he was very lucky to stay on the, 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 the wheel side of the car. We saw earlier on a much slower accident, ended up with worse uh, conditions. You can see yellow flags waving there. They might just keep it under double yellows into the S's because we're at about the halfway mark. Here you can see he turns in. Perfect line from him. The back wheel just disintegrates. You said mind-blowing. The mine shaft's on the other side, but this is the mind-blowing S's here. Dude. Wow, that's big. That, How did he keep it on the wheels? That is big eyes and brown shorts moment of note there. But a great job there by Needham. Well, a lot of luck involved there. And back to the front. Valdi Mankies gets it. He's got absolutely nothing to worry about. A great drive there by Valdi Mankies. One of the better I've seen him do all year. No doubt about that six second advantage as he comes across the line. But in the background, it's Nobre, Black and C and Smallburger. That's not done yet. It's a drag race to the line. Nobre might have what it takes here. He's going to get across the line to beat out the Vendetta man. And Black and C will have to settle for the final podium position. Class C though, look at this. Needham with an absolutely monster lead over Yanni van Rooyen after all the incidents that happened during the race. He's got this one done and dusted. A great drive to beat out van Rooyen and Voter Roos. Confirmation of Class A, Mikey's Black and C, not Bray, Smallburger and Henning, your top five. You needed that. I really needed it, Matt. I mean, I've had uh, a run of bad luck, you know, some of it my own doing, some of it not my own doing, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I deserve the card that I got and uh, now I have to keep my nose clean. So, drive as hard as I can, get it, get to the front and stay there. Uh, from your side in the cockpit, must have been absolutely astounding. Um, Andre and I had a magic start. Unfortunately, Henry was asleep. And then we just had a wonderful, wonderful dice. In the middle of the race, I ended up driving alone, which is never good. Um, but towards the end, both Adrian and Yanni caught me. And what a wonderful dive. Join us after the break for the combined categories in Gold Wagon Challenge. from the Pro Tour, and it's now the combined categories in Gold Wagon Challenge. All 41 cars about to go and do battle on the black stuff here at the world famous racetrack. Straight out the blocks though, Valdi Mankis and Carlos Nobre. Up the inside goes Derek Smallberger. Can he drag up a position into the first corner? Can he make it stick? Yes, he goes from fourth to third. Black and see on the outside. Valdi no, out in front. He's going to have to put his head down and go as hard as he possibly can because there are 41 cars who want that position. Yeah, the whole shot going to Mikey's as he goes up to three and four. Looks like he's got it all done and dusted now. But further back here, yeah, good start from Atkinson again. But this time, the sex trader Polo is right there with him. And in the background, the battle is going to re resume between Holiday, Tyrell, Governor Sami, and at the front end of it right now is Elna. She's managed to outdo them going into turn two. Atkinson putting his head down. Darren trying as hard as he can. He made a whole bunch of changes in the team to try and catch up to Atkinson, doing a great job. Pit Potkitter making up uh, the tail end of that field. There goes Class C. Let's see who gets into turn two first. And it's going to be Needham. Yanni van Rooyen on the outside. Voteru is not getting as good a start as the previous race. And it's Yanni van Rooyen around the outside of Needham. He's got the inside for turn two. Van Fleder on the outside. Adrian Dalton flicks it up the inside of Van Fleder. Van Fleder loses a position, but it's still Needham around the outside of Yanni van Rooyen. Yanni up the inside. Come on, Yanni, run him wide. No, he decides to do it clean. Voter up the inside, runs it slightly wide. And Adrian Dalton, the slingshot. But behind them is the golf two of uh, 
the Batman. He's also coming through. Yeah, amazing start here from the seas. Absolutely nothing in it and stopping almost every corner. We're into turn five now, sunset corner. And as you can see, side by side action hasn't stopped. Needham and Van Rooyen have gone almost every single corner on the circuit. They're going to make it six out of six here, side by side. Absolutely re beautiful respect by these guys. Were this production cars, we would have crashed a long time ago. But a <laughs> great time. And the, the, the same in Class D. This is Lyle and uh, Hurley. They decided not to go through Sunset together. Probably a good move there, eh? Yeah, I think so. Lyle Ramsey looking back at Hurley now. Look, Hurley's under a bit of pressure too as the two uh, Ristonic cars start to come into it. Very tight stuff here between the Coney man and Lyle Ramsey. Ramsey just hanging on for dear life right now, but they're heading down to a corner where Ramsey got out of shape. We've already seen him get completely wrong, but he managed to hang on to it. And a little bit of air time there earlier on today. He's got it much better this time as they go through the S's up towards West Bank. Rams is obviously a very, very fast learner because he doesn't make that mistake twice. And up to West Bank they go. Uh, Hurley, no, going up the inside of this time. No, not this time. Oh, or is he? He does. He flicks it up the inside. A bit of a lock up there. Ramsey decides, I'm not getting my car crunched. And he opens the door to Hurley. Now it's a drag race. Down to the mine shaft through West Bank. Through West Ham corner down to the mine shaft. This is as fast as these cars can go. This is the flat out part of this racetrack. And around the outside, Ramsey goes with Hurley. Remember, these are still cold tyres, Graham. That's the most important thing to remember here. As they come into the bowl for the first time, hard braking, Ramsey hangs on as Hurley tries to go defensive and tries to get up the inside. Can't quite make it stick. On the outside, though, not break, getting completely wrong. He has got the Vendetta car right on his tail. And it looks like there's an extra wing there on Charles Smallberger. So he's having a really tough day. Charles Smallberger getting it up into fifth position. He's tracing after his dad. That's an in-house battle in that family. Those two guys want to be the first one home at the end of the day. Charles Smallberger's boot opening, not helping him at all. That's going to cause a lot of drag for that poor young man. Now we know all about that, don't we, Mr. Nathan? But anyway, let's get on to this one. The flight hand cleaner car on the back end now, pushing hard. As Keegan Blackensee looks in his rearview mirror, he can see the Golf 1. It looks dangerous. I'll tell you something, even though that wing is, uh, well, look, the wing, I say, it's the boot that's making a bit of a wing in the car. It's definitely slowing him down slightly, but it's not holding him back from attacking. And he goes on the inside. Oh, oh a little touch between the two of them. He gets it sideways, but manages to just hang on. Well done to those two young drivers for keeping it on the black stuff. Up at West Bank, we've got Needham, we've got Van Ryan, we've got Dalton, we've got Van Fledder. These guys are on it. Van Fledder doing a much better job after getting run into by uh, Gina Monroe in the first race. And it looks like the Dark Knight has risen because he's back up there and uh, in for a chance of a podium. Voter Risto sitting on the back of this pack. He's waiting for anybody to make a mistake. He's not going to let them get away, though. Van Fledder is sideways in that Batmobile. He's trying absolutely everything he knows. He put this car on pole. So he knows the car has got pace here, Greg. Yeah, it's good to see the Golf 2s up there because normally they have a little bit of problems. Look at the problems at the front end with the Golf 1, though, and the Polo. The sex trader man is under pressure. Alma Cruiser in the Giulio Sabatini Golf is all over the back of there. And pulls wide. Looks like he might have missed a gear there slightly or definitely didn't get the drive that he wanted. And they go side by side. Two orange cars across the line. Has Alma done enough? No, Darren's going to come back at her. Not able to squeeze her out, though, going into turn two. And he has to settle for third place right now. Back to Class D, we've got uh, Raul, Lyle Ramsey, excuse me, right out in front. Hurley's still sitting there going, I'm going to get you, but coming onto the back of this pack is Piazza Musso. He's right there, there's no doubt about it. There's going to be a three-way battle there between these three golfs, and uh, at the moment, Whoa. it looks like Hurley's the most dangerous. He has a big look on the inside, into Clubhouse Corner, and he makes it stick. He sold a dummy to Ramsey. I think Ramsey might have been caught watching that slightly slower car pulling to the sideline, and uh, yeah, that's a bit of a pity there, as uh, the red golf of uh, Craig Ecote parks on the left. But if Ramsey doesn't pay attention now, he's going to have Devin Piazza Musa throwing it up the inside of him as well. These guys are at it. These youngsters haven't let up for one second. There is no time to snooze here. As they come up to the front end, the battle between the youngsters in Class A continues, and Smallberger has managed to find a way through on the Vendetta car there of Keegan Blackensee. So uh, that little wing on the back of the car is not hindering him at all, and he now goes for Nobre. Nobre seems to be slowing, though. Nobre's got a problem. He's pulled to the sideline, and Carlos Nobre, what a pity there. He has to pull out, and it looks like that might be the end of that particular car's outing here at Kyalami. Absolutely. Keegan Blackens is sitting there going, OK, I'll have that position. 
I didn't earn it, but I'll take it. And so is Charles Smallberger. Now he's going to have to go. Smallberger goes up the inside of, a, of the back end of, on the racetrack. And that wing is not hurt, hurting that car at all at the moment. Now good from the back marker just to show them the way through. Pointed and gesticulated to take them on the left-hand side. There you can see Nobre pulling to the sideline. That's a big pity because, as I said, he has got real good pace here and goes well at Kyle Army. Oh. It would have been good to see. But speaking of good to see, Van Roy's got a problem too. He slowed up and the Batmobile goes flying past him. So does Dalton. Oh, that is a big pity there for Yanni. Oh, Yanni Van Rooyen out of it. He's, he's leading this championship and a failure is the worst thing he can get uh, when he's leading a championship. He doesn't want to lose the points, but Van Fletter has got past Dalton. Somewhere along the line, Van Fletter has got past Dalton. He is doing a sterling drive towards the front of the pack. He, he must have started quite far back in this race though. Second place still up for grabs in class B and Alna pushing hard but not able to run with the pace of that six trader polo. So whatever the team did is definitely paid off. In the background though, whoa, Stevenson. That's the way to do it. Cross polo, that was a vicious one, dude. Going from a motocross background, he had it flat out while he was on the sand. Great recovery there by Stevenson. That could have got really, really ugly. Dion Holiday driving uh, Warren Muir's car and he's trying as hard as he can to get Tyrol with uh, only one lap left. This is it. Down to the line. Valdi Mankis is going to make it a double for the day. A brilliant bit of driving here from Valdi. A massive recovery from the last time out, as I said. And this is the way we like to see him at the front. Large and in charge as he comes across the line. And more importantly, what a great second drive there from Derek Smallberger. He has left the rest of the field behind him. His son, Charles, unable to catch him. So the in-house battle is won by Dad this time. And Charles Smallberger, even with the winger, had to take third place. Here comes the battle for Class B. Oh, I say it's a battle. It was won out convincingly by this man. And another great drive from Atkinson. Looks like uh, Team Nathan are going to have to do some work for the next round, but Yeah, we're going to have to pull our finger out, but uh, fear not, it will be pulled out. And Nathan will be looking for that top of the podium. Atkinson took it today, Nathan in second and Cruiser in third. Hurley wins out the Class D battle with Piazza Musso and Lau Ramsey. Uh, the car seems to have come good. Race one, unfortunately, Rory drove away from us and uh, I got into a ding-dong with Alna for a little while and we had a great sort of tussle. And then in race two, same sort of story, Rory got away and then Alna and I had a really good go at each other for must be five or six of the nine laps. It was, it was a fantastic day. Jamesy, a rock and roll day at the front. I mean, Lyle just got beat up pretty bad in that second race, otherwise he'd be with you as well. Oh, I couldn't keep with him in the beginning, it was just amazing. But whew, I got docked to, to penalty, so I started a bit, la a bit at the back and then all the horns came out and I just wanted the win. Up and down, you've got a couple of tracks you rock at, a couple of tracks you hate. You finally figured this one out though. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of work thanks to Piazza Motorsport and Rostonic for the supports. And yeah, eventually we got up there with Lyle and James and it was a very good race, that last race. Confirmation of Class A, Mikey's taking it from Smallburger, squared, and then Black and C and Gossman, four and five. Needham took Class C with Van Fleder and Dalton, two and three. Valdi, just a cracking day. Like you said at the beginning, you really had to turn things around today while well, you put a stamp on it now. First one, I didn't get the fastest lap, but uh, you know, that's that's what racing is, you know. Sometimes it's a, it's a cruel, cruel sport. You know, sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, and I've, I've been uh, down for a very long time, and I'm, and I'm back now, so looking forward to Pekiso. Yannick van Rooyen maintains his lead, even though he had a DNF in race two. James Hurley has closed in on him, and so has Nathan. Watch out for that battle at Pekiso. A big thanks to Goldwagen and all our associate sponsors for this action from round six of the Pro Tour.